All right, the word of the Lord this weekend is shalom or stress. Shalom. Turn to the person next to you and say shalom or stress. Which one you got this morning? Which one you got? Which one did you come in here with? More importantly, which one do you want to leave with? I want to welcome our online campus, North Campus, Manford Campus. If you got a Bible, go to Isaiah 54, verse 10. Yeah, we get excited for the word of God. Isaiah 54, verse 10 says, even though the mountains may be shaken, even though the hills may be removed, let me just put that into context. He's saying, even though there's chaos around you, even though the world is shaking around you, we're living in a time where the world has gone crazy. There's wars, there's rumors of wars, there's kidnappings, there's murders, there's constant strife and chaos in the streets. There's a sense of, of, of division and there's a sense of uh, just people searching for justice, searching for hope. Where is the peace in 2023? Technology has increased. People are searching on chat GPT, trying to figure out what peace is and how do I get it? People are looking through AI, trying to figure out if AI is going to you know, bring more peace into our world and it's only causing more anxiety, more panic. People all over the world are trying to find in different spheres, in different categories, their own version of peace, a sense of world peace, a sense of uh, tranquility. How do we get along with each other? And, and Isaiah the prophet, thousands of years ago, he said this, even though the world is crazy, even though the mountains are shaken, even though the hills are being removed, God promises that his love for us will not be shaken. If there's one thing we can bank on, if there's one thing we can stand on, if there is a stability for our times, it is the love of God. Yes, Jesus loves me. He says the unfailing love of God will not be shaken, nor the covenant of peace. God gave a covenant to the children of God. When we put our faith in Jesus Christ, we're a part of that covenant. What does that word peace mean? In the Hebrew translation, it is shalom. Shalom is the greeting they give. I was just in Israel a couple months ago, right before the war broke out. And when I was there, everywhere I went, they would say shalom, shabbat shalom, shalom, shalom. It was a greeting for hello, goodbye, but the greeting meant peace be with you, peace. That was their greeting, give peace, peace, peace. And, and, and shalom was not just something they said, it was something they wanted to cultivate. A, a sense of how do we cultivate shalom in our homes? How do we cultivate shalom in our communities? How do we have shalom? Well, the promise for shalom came really in Luke chapter one, verse 76. The prophet Zechariah, before Jesus showed up, he says to his son, John the Baptist, right when he's born, he says, and you, my child, will be called a prophet of the Most High. You will go before the Lord to prepare the way for him and to give his people the knowledge of salvation through the forgiveness of their sins. That's what John the Baptist did. He says, because of the tender mercy of our God by which the rising sun will come to us from heaven. And then I love this last verse right here. He says, to shine on those who are living in darkness. We're in a world that's getting darker and darker, right? People are losing their minds. They're losing their morals. They're losing their moral compass. But he says, this light is gonna shine in a dark place. And in the shadow of death, it will guide people on the path of shalom, the path of peace. If I could look right now at your stress level, I like to draw thought bubbles when I'm preaching, and, and I just imagine what you're thinking when I'm preaching. I imagine what you're thinking up in the top, what you're thinking down low here. Anyone who gets up to use the bathroom, I have a thought bubble. I'm like, they left because they're offended at me, or I don't know. I'm, I'm, I have thought, if I could put a stress bubble above your head and find out what your current stress level is right now, on a scale of one to 10, if I could see everybody's stress level. I want you to think about that. On a scale of one to 10, what is your current stress level that you walked in here with today? What is it? Just shout out the number. Let's be honest. Don't, don't lie in church. What is it right now? I see six. I hear 10 over there. I'm not going to ask why. Uh, I hear someone last night said 1,000. I was like, that's not even on the scale, but Okay. Uh, someone said zero. Who said zero? You are too young to say zero. I don't think we're, listen, I don't think it's till we get older where we're like, I don't care anymore. The things I used to worry about. I look forward to being 85 years old and just not caring about anything, right? You know what I'm saying? But, but I think when we're younger, we care about a lot and we can get stressed about a lot of things. 
Uh, just last Sunday, we had a Friendsgiving lunch right after church, and it was gonna be awesome. It, it was awesome. It was beautiful. But I was starting to stress out. I had just finished preaching our 11 a.m. service, and then I preached the 9 a.m., and I had been up early, and then I preached Saturday night service. I had prayed with a lot of people, and all five kids wanted to go into the Friendsgiving lunch here at the church. So Ellie is pulling on me. She's like, Daddy, you're not looking at me enough. And Gianna's pulling on me. She's like, Daddy, me, 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 me. That's all she can say right now. And then Liam's like, Daddy, we need to have some one-on-one time. Benny's like, Daddy, I want some one-on-one time. Mac is like, Daddy, I want you to go get me some Cane's chicken from the Friendsgiving. And then people are coming up to me. They're like, Pastor Paul, will you pray for me and my kids? I'm like, I need prayer for my kids right now. When do I get to take the hat off and just... Chill out, because I'm stressed right now. Anyone ever get stressed? Maybe in the last week? Was Thanksgiving a little stressful for anybody in the room? <laughs> we went on a road trip to Branson, and Br- like, listen, Branson's great. It took us two and a half hours to just leave Tulsa from like just figuring out what the kids needed. A diaper got poopy. Pit kids are screaming. Kids wanted to change seats. One kid didn't want to have his seatbelt on. One kid, you know, couldn't find his art book to draw. And they're, they're shouting. And me and Ashley are like, in Jesus name, bless this trip with shalom, you know. <laughs> but the point is this, there's a lot of things in our world to be stressed about. Yesterday, I pulled up to the gas station at Quick Trip to get my boys some Gatorades for the wrestling tournament they were in. And I could just feel the stress in Quick Trip. I pulled into that gas station parking lot. Cars are honking at each other. People are waiting to get gas. People are shouting in the parking lot. People are throwing up their fists, lifting up fingers with their fists. I go inside Quick Trip. The man behind the cash register is screaming at the cash register because it won't close and it won't shut and then the quarters start falling out because some guy wants change and this guy wants tobacco and this guy can't get tobacco and this guy drops the donuts and the kids scream I want the glazed donut and I'm looking at it and I'm like it's the most wonderful time of the year how many of y'all think this might be the most stressful season of the entire year come on can we just be real in church for a second it's stre- it, it gets stressful. It gets crazy. I go to this wrestling tournament yesterday, and the wrestling tournament is chaos. Now, it's controlled chaos. There's five different matches happening at the same time. There's 200 people on the gym floor, parents screaming, referees blowing whistles, people walking around the mats. The kids don't know where to look. I don't know where to look, and I'm the adult. I'm like, where do I look? And I could feel it yesterday in the gym. I was looking everywhere, because referees are blowing whistles, these kids are wrestling, these kids are wrestling, these parents are screaming, and my son, Benny, he was about to wrestle, and I could tell he was looking everywhere, and I just said, Benny, just listen to the voice that matters the most. In the middle of chaos, in the middle of a stressful environment, Benny won that wrestling match, because he tuned in to the voice that matters most. Isaiah 9 verse 6 says, for a child will be born to us. Israel was waiting on a Messiah that would be perfect, that would be packaged as a king riding on a white horse, overthrowing the Roman Empire. And the prophet Isaiah 700 years says, hold up. He's not coming as a, a, as a big king thrown over the Roman Empire. He's not coming the way you think he's going to come. He's coming as a baby. Sometimes peace is not packaged the way we thought it was going to be. And maybe that's why we get stressed, because we're demanding a perfect package in this season. And when things aren't perfect, we're trying to find the peace. Isaiah says, for a child will be born to us, and to us a son will be given, and the government will rest on his shoulders, and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, Prince of Peace. We're living in a time where people are losing their minds, running faster than ever, consuming more information than ever, buying more stuff than ever, the most materialistic society that we've ever seen. How do we keep our peace in a nation that's gone crazy? How do we keep our peace in a world that's gone crazy? You know what, I was thinking about what your stress level might be, and some of y'all answered three, four, five, six, seven, some of y'all. Anyone get close to a 10 in the last week? Anyone get close to a 10? Anyone cross that 10 like you, the, the, the top bursted? If you're not raising your hand, your family knows it. They're like pointing at you right now. 
But here's, here's a deeper question to ask. Where is the source of your stress coming from? If you could, in this current season, you might, might have 10 different sources, but if you could narrow it down to one single source, if you were like, if I really thought about it, this, this thing right here is causing the biggest amount of stress for me. And I want you to think about it. Close your eyes, and you better not point at me either. <laughs> Ashley, don't point at me. And I don't want you to point at your spouse. I want you to close your eyes. Just imagine, imagine who or what is causing the most stress for you. Okay, open your eyes. Don't fall asleep. I know we had, we had a lot of turkey this week. We had a lot of stuffing. The stuffing was stressful too, right? All right, now open your eyes. I think the answer to that is found in four categories. I think people get stressed because of four different reasons. Number one, people get stressed because of a place. Number two, a pace. Number three, a problem. And number four, a person. Or you might say, it's not just one person, it's people. I can love God, but loving people is my problem. Homo sapiens, right? Human beings. People, people, people. It's a place. For some, you get stressed going to a place. You get stressed going to where you work. You're like, my work environment is stressful. For some, it's a pace. You go, I just, I, I feel like I'm running around and I'm constantly going from one thing to the next thing and I don't have a good pace right now. Y'all remember the story of Mary and Martha in the Bible? Luke chapter 10, Jesus is over at Mary and Martha's house and Martha is cleaning in the kitchen and she is working on things. She is doing the dishes. She is sweeping the floor and Mary's over there having a shalom moment with Jesus and Martha's over here stressed out. What a, what a good picture of shalom or stress. And you go, well, hold on, Paul. Let's not be too harsh on Martha. She was doing all the work that Mary was not doing. You ever get frustrated when people are not pulling their weight? When they're not cleaning up the apartment? They're not cleaning up their rooms? They're not making their bed? They're not doing the dishes? Anyone just, like, you're like, I could use some help right now. That's where Martha was at. She was stressed because Mary wasn't helping her. And she says, Jesus, why did you tell Mary to come into the kitchen and help me with the dishes? And Jesus says, Martha, 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 take a chill pill. Turn to the person next to you and say, chill out, chill out. And Jesus says, Martha, you are worried about many things. The word worry is interchangeable with stress. You are stressed about many things, but one thing is important right now. We have to know what's the most important thing in moments because sometimes it is important to do a chore, but sometimes it's important to just look at your family and be present. Sometimes it's important to work on work, and then sometimes it's important to hang the phone up and arrive with who is most important in that moment. And when we don't have good margin, when we're living with a very hectic pace, everybody pays for our stress. I was, I, I've been asking people lately, how you doing? And the, the word I keep hearing is busy, 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 busy. I'm busy. I wrote down some of the answers. I'm busier than a three-legged cat trying to cover up his poop on ice. <laughs> think about that for a sec. Don't think about that, but just think about that. What? A three-legged cat trying to cover his poop on ice. Anyways, some people say, I'm busier than a chicken running around with his head cut off. This got violent. We're decapitating chickens now. <laughs> One guy said, I'm busier than a one-armed wallpaper hanger trying to do it all by himself. It's intense. I feel, I feel stressed because nobody's helping me right now. Sometimes I feel like I'm an unpaid Uber driver for my kids, just driving them around, just taking them from one thing to the next thing to everything. And, and at, the, at the root of this stress, oftentimes is a, a feeling of pride, like I'm doing this all by myself. And I, I feel very independent here. I feel very on my own here, and it's driving me into stress. For some people, it is a problem. It's a problem. So it's a place. It's a pace. It's a problem. There's a current problem that hasn't changed or there's a problem that's been around for 20 years 
Or it's a problem that happened a long time ago, but it's stressing you out now. Or it's a problem that hasn't happened yet, but you can feel it. Like you're gloomy. You can just, you can, you're dreading this thing is coming. This problem is hanging over your head. It could be a financial problem. It could be a relational problem. It could be a, a, a health problem, a sickness, but maybe a legal situation. But ultimately, these things all lead to really the fourth category, which is probably the most important. That's a people problem. A person is stressing you out. Don't point at them if they're on the row with you. <laughs> a person or a group of people. And the source of our stress is connected to the path of our peace. Whatever I, I identify as the source of my stress will regulate where I try to seek my peace. Whatever I identify as the source of my stress will regulate where I try to seek to find peace. So if a place is stressing me out, I'm going to demand that place to change or I'm going to change from that place. If going home stresses me out, that place is a stressful place. I need to find a new place that won't stress me out, right? If going to church stresses me out, then I need to stop going to church. If going uh, to, to see my relatives stresses me out, then I can't. If, if, if going, to, um, this, going to my workplace stresses me out, then I need to find a new workplace. The problem with that is you take you with you everywhere you go. And what I've found is that places are not the source of stress. <laughs> stress is an internal thing. If a person is your source of stress, if you go, this person just stresses me out. Oh, he stresses me out. He, no, I'm losing hair over this person. Don't, don't let any more gray hairs come from a person, by the way. You go, Paul, you have not met the person that is stressing me out. I am stressed. And until this person changes, I can't find peace. If peace is regulated to a place, a person, or a problem resolving, then I'm missing the whole point of the gospel. Because the gospel does not promise that everything on the outside is going to change and then the Prince of Peace will come. The gospel says, even in your darkness, even in the shadow of death, a light will come and the peace will show up. And peace is not a destination. I've been to some beautiful destinations and peace wasn't there. Shalom is not found in Hawaii. You go, if I could just go on vacation, you take you with you on vacation and you stress out on vacation and flying through an airport is stressful. Those people are stressed. And, and if I carry that stress, I remember Ashley and I on our honeymoon, I got stressed because my dad was in the hospital and I didn't want to miss a moment. And I was, I was looking at my phone every second and I was paranoid and I was stressed and I was anxious and, and she didn't know how to fix it because she knew, she understood that I was caring about my dad, but I was carrying a weight that I couldn't carry. And that stress was robbing, no matter how beautiful it was out there where we were, you could be in the most beautiful place and still not have peace. Some of the wealthiest people who live in some of the most beautiful places are the most stressed out people in the world. And then some of the poorest people who live with nothing and have no shoes, have no boots, have no jackets, living in a dumpster, are walking around with shalom. Shalom is not dictated by what you own or where you live or how much money you make or what car you drive. Shalom is an internal position. It is not an external position. There's nothing out here that can fix shalom. Shalom is something I receive on the inside. Galatians chapter five says, when you have the Holy Spirit inside you, any spirit-filled people in the room? Yeah. Spirit-filled people can get stressed sometimes. You can hear it sometimes in their tongues. They're like, and I'm like, who are you stressed out about? Oh, I'm just praying right now over something right now. We got we to gotta calm down because the fruits of the Holy Spirit are love, joy, peace. Let the peace of God rule in your hearts, Colossians chapter 3. Let the peace of God be the umpire of your prayer language. I can pray from a stressed out place or I can pray from a peaceful place. One produces better fruit. One produces a better result. How am I doing? How's your shalom level? I want us to leave today with a greater shalom that rests on us. By the way, what is shalom? Let's talk about that word shalom. 
The definition of shalom, it is the Hebrew word for peace. But shalom means wholeness. It means completeness. It means perfect. It means prosperous, harmonious, body, soul, and mind in harmony. Did you know your body, soul, and mind can be in harmony? It also means spiritual relaxation. You could be relaxed spiritually. You don't have to be stressed out spiritually. You can, you can relax. Have you ever been around a calming person, a person just with a peaceful presence, and you're like, this feels good. It feels good to be around a peaceful person here. We need more peaceful Christians walking through Walmart and Quick Trip and the mall and our workplaces, people who live with shalom, they forgive faster. They have an increased acceptance of who they are in Christ. So stress comes when I'm thinking about what you're thinking about about me, but you're probably not thinking about me as much as I think you're thinking about me. But stress makes me overthink and overanalyze every conversation and every person's body language, and I get stressed out. I'm overstimulated because I care way too much about you and and weigh less about what God thinks about me. Shalom comes when I go, God, you made me and you don't make mistakes. And I thank you that I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I'm a child of God. And Lord, I thank you that I can walk in shalom in my workplace. I can walk in shalom at my college, in high school, middle school. You don't have to have, you don't have to reach a certain age to reach peace. You can have peace as a 14 year old or a 40 year old. Like peace is not regulated just to a certain age demographic. It's available for every person. People who have shalom, they worry less. They feel good about life. I remember as a kid, during the holidays, um, things could get stressful in our house for all of us. And my dad had this bright idea. He went and collected pecans outside, um, just out in the fields of the neighborhood. And he put them in a bag, brought them home. He's like, I got a brilliant idea. I'm gonna cook pecans for the whole family which we don't really eat pecans, but he was trying to just decrease the stress level in the Darty house, bring some shalom. So turns on the oven, comes in the living room. We're watching football. He's like, ooh, I like football. Hour goes by. We start smelling smoke in the house. We've been through a house fire before. We're like, is there a fire going on? He's like, I don't know. Let me go look around. He's walking around. And he goes, oh, I put the nuts in the oven. And he goes in there and the pecans are on fire. And he starts screaming, my nuts are on fire. My nuts are on fire. My mom walks in. She's like, Billy Joe, what did you do? Why are the nuts on fire? And he's like, I don't know. And things were stressed. We were laughing so hard. It was funny. <laughs> Sometimes you just need to laugh at stressful moments. Stress doesn't allow you to laugh. I, I think shalom brings laughter. Shalom brings, you just start laughing. You're like, that's pretty funny that Billy Joe said his nuts were on fire. Anyways, it's pretty funny. <laughs> We need to stop taking ourselves so seriously that we're overly stimulated and we're triggered and I'm easily offended. Let's talk about stress for a second. Stress leads people to being easily triggered by anything or anyone, whether they're at the house, at the church, at the job, at Quick Trip. (laughs) They have very little tolerance for other people's mistakes. Stressed out people often get upset at themselves because they're perfectionists. The more I demand perfection from myself and I demand perfection from my church and from Quick Trip and from you and from the oven not burning the nuts, I get angry. I get angry. I get impatient. I get impatient. I get on edge. I'm about to burst, right? I need the band to come out. We need to worship in Jesus' name. There was a song we used to hear when we would watch the movie White Christmas. There's this moment where Bing Crosby is talking to, I forget the lady's name, but she can't sleep. And he says, when you're worried and you can't sleep, just count your blessings instead of sheep. You'll fall asleep counting your blessings. When my bankroll is looking small, I remember when I had none at all and I fall asleep counting my blessings. One of the ways we find shalom is we stop focusing on what I'm short on, what I don't have. Stress comes when I'm short on cash. I don't have enough money. I'm short on peace. I'm just, ugh. I'm short on patience. I'm just on my last nerve. I'm on my last nerve with these. I was talking with Benny before his wrestling match the other day, and he he said, I'm shorter than this guy. He's taller than me. He's bigger than me. He's been wrestling for jinx. 
I've been wrestling for victory. <laughs> Our wrestling program's only been around a couple years, and, and Jinx's been around for a long time. And, and we're talking about all the shortcomings, and it can stress you out. It can make you worried because you're like, who am I? I'm, I'm a little compared to this guy. But when he focused in on his father's voice, David said in Psalm 23, verse 1, the Lord is my shepherd. I'm not short on anything. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. The Lord is my shepherd. I have all that I need. The Lord is with me. I'm good. The Lord, Jehovah Shalom. He goes before me and behind me. I'm not short on patience. I'm not short on strength. I'm not short on support from family. I might not have these people for me. I may not have these things going for me, but because Jehovah Shalom is with me, I can carry Shalom with me even into shortages, even into seasons where the the economy is short, where things aren't coming up the way I thought. We were putting a puzzle together during Thanksgiving week. We put five puzzles together and all of them were missing pieces. That is stressful. That is stressful. We played board games. That is stressful. There was one puzzle. We tried searching for a piece for an hour. We sat down each kid and interrogated them. What did you do with the piece? No, we didn't. Me and Liam, we were like, where's the piece at? Because me and him, we cared. We were like, we got to finish this, you know. And Gianna was like, and Liam's like, did you eat it, Gianna? Did you eat it? We're going to make you throw this thing up. She's like, no. We had to learn to move on with the missing piece. And sometimes life has missing pieces. People that used to sit at the table are gone. People who used to be around aren't here anymore. Either because they passed away or there's an estranged relationship. And you, you, you can search your whole life for that missing piece to try to find peace. You're like, if we could just get that thing. If peace is regulated to a when-then situation, when this person comes home, our family will have peace. When you quit your job, we'll have peace. When, you, when we have children, once we're able to have kids and, and things change scientifically and we're able to have a baby, we'll have peace. When our kids start acting right, when they get their act together, then we'll have peace. When your spouse finally gets his, her behavior, well, all that's it, we're gonna have peace. When this ha if peace is regulated to when then, we're gonna be waiting our whole life for that missing piece. We couldn't find that piece to the puzzle. Finally, we just had to walk away from the puzzle and just leave it because we had done the best we could. And instead of allowing that missing piece to drive us into stress, we decided, let's go have some checks Mix. Let's just enjoy the rest of the day. I think some of us are demanding from God things that we think are gonna bring us peace when God says, I am your peace. When he's not there, I'm your peace. When she's crazy, I'm your peace. When things aren't going right, I'm your peace. Your peace is not dictated by a puzzle piece being right there or a person being in that chair or that thing happening because life is going to be unfair. Jesus said in this world, John 16, in this world, you will have trouble. You'll have despair. You'll have grief. There's going to be problems. I, I, wish, I wish that this message of faith fixed every single circumstance and every single person that could cause you stress. Here's what it can do. It can help change you. And when I allow the message of faith to change me, then I can approach people problems, places, situations, busy seasons, holidays where you are running everywhere. But I can approach it with shalom. And I can say, no matter how you treat me, I'm going to bring shalom into this room. No matter what happens in this situation, I choose shalom. Jesus said in Matthew 6, 34, who of you by worrying can add an hour to your life? Who of you by being stressed can add, in verse 27, who of you can add an inch to your stature? Stress makes you shorter. Stress increases your blood pressure. Stress leads to ulcers. Stress leads to all kinds of sickness and disease and stomach problems. And medical science has studied that worry and stress is one of the biggest causes to deep, dark, intense sicknesses that dwell in bodies. Because worry and stress is a huge issue. Here's something to think about. 40% of what we stress about will never happen. They've proven this scientifically. 40% of the things we stress about will never happen. That feels good. Just let that settle. 30% concern old decisions that you can't change. They've already happened. So you gotta just 
let the blood of Jesus Christ rest on you or that thing. 12% centers on criticism coming from family or friends or people, mostly untrue, made by people who don't understand your current season of life. 10% is related to health, which worsens when you worry about it. So if I'm stressing about health situations, I'm actually increasing my health problems. Only 8% of the things we stress about are actually legitimate. And what we should do with that 8% is we should bring it to God. Martha, Martha, you are worried and stressed about many things. Isaiah the prophet says the government will be upon his shoulders. He will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Jesus said, seek first the kingdom of God and all these things you're stressed about will be added unto you. Your emotions are a direct result of your devotion. If you are devoted to problems and things and money and people and all this stuff, if they have the throne of your heart, they will drive you into a stressed out place. But if you put Jesus back on the throne of your heart, you still have relationships, you still have money, you still have a job, you still have all that stuff, but that stuff has a back seat. So shalom sits in the front seat and the stress has to take a back seat. You say, hold on, I'm not letting stress drive me today. I'm not gonna blow the lid today. I'm gonna have a longer fuse with people. I'm not gonna scream in the parking lot. I'm not, when I get out of here, I'm not gonna be angry at my family. I'm gonna let shalom, I'm gonna carry peace with me wherever I go. Let me end with this last story. There was a man named Horatio Spafford. In 1871, he suffered a major, major issue in his family. His son died at the age of two, but the great Chicago fire happened and it burned and ruined all of his financial investments. He lost everything that he had been investing in and building. His further business interests were hit by an economic downturn just two years after that in 1873. So he decided to try to travel to Europe to go hear his friend Dwight L. Moody preach and he was gonna bring his wife and his four daughters. Business kind of delayed him, so he sent them ahead, and on that ship, they collided with another ship. All four of his daughters were killed and drowned in the Atlantic Ocean. His wife was the only one who survived, and she sent him a letter back in America. She said, I was saved alone. Our children are dead. He got on a boat. He began to sail across the Atlantic Ocean towards England to meet up with his wife. As they were passing the spot where his daughters drowned, the, the captain said, this is the area where the ship that your daughters were on went down. He was crying, searching for peace in his soul. And he pulled out a pen and paper and he wrote these words down. When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot thou hast taught me to know, it is well, it is well with my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul. With my soul, it is well. Shalom, it is well with my soul. Though Satan should buffet, though trials should come, let this blessed assurance control that Christ has regarded my helpless estate and hath shed his own blood for my soul. My sin, oh, the bliss of this glorious thought, my sin, not in part but the whole, has been nailed to the cross and I bear it no more. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, oh, my soul. For me, be it Christ, be it Christ hence to live. If Jordan above me shall roll, no pang shall be mine, for in death as in life, thou wilt will whisper thy peace to my soul. But Lord, tis for thee, for thy coming we wait. The sky, not the grave, is our goal. O trump of the angel, O voice of the Lord, blessed hope, blessed rest of my soul. And Lord, haste the day when my faith shall be sight. The clouds be rolled back as a scroll. The trump shall resound and the Lord shall descend. A song in the night, O my soul. When he met his wife on the other side, they started a ministry group in Jerusalem. They moved down to Jerusalem, Israel, and they started a ministry group called The Overcomers. The Overcomers, where they would share their story and they would sing that song, It Is Well, and they would talk about the peace that is found that passes our understanding. Peace is not the absence of circumstances. Peace is not found in a pill, a drug. Peace is not found in an, a vice or another relationship. Peace is not found in another person, a place or thing. Peace is found in Jesus Christ. And when I accept that peace, when I allow that peace to rest on me, I want you to stand your feet all over this place. When I allow that peace to lead me, to guide me, 
Peace is not a destination I get to someday. Peace is a path that God puts me on every single day of my life. I don't know what tomorrow holds, but I know who holds tomorrow. And it is well with my soul. Put your hand on your heart. Just say, it is well with my soul. Just say, shalom, shalom. I want us just to bow our heads and close our eyes. If you're here today and you've just been stressed, maybe you have felt overwhelmed, maybe the enemy has been stirring up just a sense of anxiety, worry, stress, and you want free from that. You want the peace that passes understanding. You want the shalom of God to settle on your heart and mind. You want to sleep better tonight. You want to start walking in greater authority. You want to start walking in greater confidence that God has got you. If that's you, I want you to raise your hand all over this room. This message was for you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Yes, yes. From the front to the back. Yeah, just kind of wave at me. Hold your hand up. If you're here today and you just need prayer, maybe you need a miracle, maybe you need healing, maybe you need to get right with God. You just say, man, I'm not right with God. I need to repent. I need his forgiveness. I need peace with God. I need shalom with the Lord. Today, it's available. It's here. If you raised your hand or wanted to raise your hand, would you leave your seat? Come and join me at this altar. We're just going to worship for a few minutes. And I want you to just allow the presence of God to settle on you, whether you're coming down to the front or standing at your seat. I want you to let the peace that passes understanding, let the shalom of heaven rest on your soul. Allow yourself not to be in a hurry. Allow yourself not to be stressed. Allow yourself not to be running from the next thing to the next thing to the next thing, but to let the Lord settle you this morning. Lamar, would you lead us in that worship song? The altar is open. The altar is open for anyone who needs help, anyone who needs peace, anyone who needs hope, anyone who needs prayer, anyone who needs a miracle, anyone who needs grace. Peace. 
have seen God be faithful in your life? I think the enemy stirs up stress and gets us to forget the faithfulness of God, that he's been good, he's been faithful. If he was faithful back then, he'll be faithful again in the future. So just pray this with me. Say, Jesus, thank you that you are faithful. You are the stability that I can trust in, that I can depend on the sure foundation. My hope is in you. My peace is in you. Thank you, Jesus, for dying on the cross for my sins. I repent and I receive your forgiveness. I confess you as my Lord and Savior. And I thank you for that shalom, that heavenly peace that rests on my soul, on my body, on my mind, on my spirit, in my house, wherever I go, that I walk in peace. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.